Should I be locking in my mortgage right now? Do you think interest rates are going to go up? If I lock in, do you think they're going to come back down? These are the questions that we are getting asked on a daily basis right now. And they are some of the hardest questions to answer in the mortgage business because the reality is nobody knows the actual answers. So in this video, we're going to talk about whether or not it is time to lock in your mortgage or if you're getting a brand new mortgage, if you should be taking a fixed rate now. But before we get into all the details, do me a favor hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. It really means a lot when you subscribe to this channel and it helps other people who are asking the exact same questions as you find the answers. Now, before we get into this, I need to be upfront and honest. There's gonna be a lot of people in the comments here talking about how I suggested to people that they take a variable rate, how I'm responsible for a whole bunch of people being screwed, and how it was pretty obvious that interest rates were going to go up. And I wanna address those first and foremost, because first and foremost, everyone who got a mortgage since 2020 in Canada had to have some form of an advisor, whether it was their banker or a mortgage broker or somebody at a discount mortgage brokerage, they were talking to somebody and the person that they were talking to should have assessed their risk. We've talked about risk from the very beginning with respect to choosing variable versus fixed rates. And that has always been a part of our process when a client comes to Mortgage 360 to get their mortgage. Those that didn't have the risk tolerance to have a variable rate mortgage did not get a variable rate with us because that was one of the things we talked about as being the most important. In fact, in the intro to almost every single video on this channel, we talked about product, penalty, and price in that order. And guess what? Product means variable versus fixed rates. And that means you needed to choose a variable versus a fixed based on your risk tolerance as the starting point to getting a mortgage. We didn't start with which had a lower rate, variable or fixed. We started with the right product and then we moved to the interest rate conversation after we determined whether variable or fixed was best for that person based on their risk tolerance. Now, the next thing is people who say that we should have been able to predict that interest rates were going to go up. And the reality is, yes, in hindsight, it seems like it was obvious that interest rates were going to go up. However, when we had the Bank of Canada suggesting that interest rates would remain low till the end of 2023, and we didn't realize Realized that there was a possibility that a ship was going to get stuck in the Suez Canal and that supply chain issues would continue in China as the economy shut itself down repeatedly due to their zero COVID policy and that inflation would just run rampant beyond it being transitory. Well, based on the information we had at the time, we made the best decisions with the information that we had. And yes, some people missed out on locking in, but at the end of the day, Back then, we knew that there was a large portion of people that aren't going to make it to the end of their five-year term, and if interest rates would have remained the same or gone lower, they would have found themselves in a position where they would have had a significant penalty. Penalties that were much larger in a lot of cases than what the potential risk was with respect to rising interest rates. So when we look at overall risk for people, there's the risk that interest rates go up, and there's the risk that something changes in the next three years and you could have a big penalty. Which one are you more worried about? And for us, in our mortgage process at Mortgage 360, we had these conversations with clients and clients made the decisions of whether or not to choose variable or fixed. Now, if you chose to get your mortgage elsewhere and you didn't have these same conversations with your bank or your broker, I feel awful for you, but that is part of the process of getting a mortgage is determining your risk tolerance. So while there's a lot of people that found themselves in variable rates with their big banks, not realizing that there's a difference between a variable and an adjustable rate mortgage because they didn't have all the information they needed to make that decision. At the end of the day, every Canadian made the decision that was right for them at that time with the best information that they had. And by the way, if you did choose a mortgage in 2020 or 2021, at a low interest rate, you did qualify at 5%, which is still higher than the interest rate that you're paying on your variable or your adjustable rate mortgage. And you should be able to still weather the storm from a qualifying perspective because the stress test is designed to make sure that you can still afford that mortgage that you got two or three years ago when interest rates got to 5%, which is still not quite where they are right now. So let's get into it. Let's discuss variable versus fixed rates in a time where we've seen interest rates go from 0.25% to 3.25% in basically a six month period of time. And it looks as though interest rates are going to continue to go up. And we've done a bunch of videos on this concept in the past. We've talked about variable versus fixed and the reasons why. And at the end of the day, we always come to the same conclusion. The choice is yours and you have to make the decision that is best for you. 
but there are some data points you can look at in order to help determine whether or not it is the right decision for you. And first and foremost, I'm going to link up a video right here. It is from February of this year where we talked about variable versus fixed in 2022. And we talked specifically about the old Mosh Malevsky study that's been widely quoted in the mortgage and real estate industry with respect to variable versus fixed. We talked about when the right time, according to that study, it is to choose a fixed rate mortgage. And we're gradually getting closer to a time that seems like it might be the time to start locking in mortgage rates. And I'm going to explain to you exactly where we're at right now and what is so different today from back then. Now, I have to give a huge caveat to this because you have to understand that nothing that we're going to say in this video is a forecast. And we've done very little forecasting at all because I'm very wary of forecasting. As somebody with a formal education in economics, I find that it is really hard to make predictions about the economy and that economists in general are better in hindsight than they are looking forward. Now, that being said, we've talked about all different types of theories with respect to where interest rates should go, what the textbooks say, what different economists say. And the reality here is that we're making a decision on a mortgage, which is all about our own personal risk tolerance. So again, go back and check out that video from February of this year, because it is really important when it comes to your risk tolerance and deciding whether or not you want to pick a fixed or a variable rate. Now, there's been some developments in the interest rate market. So I want to take you in and I want to show you the Canada five year government bond, because this is the bond that is used basically to price mortgages in Canada, or at least five year fixed mortgages. And while over the long term, the five year Canada government bond will move basically in the same direction as the Bank of Canada rate, it does move independently and it can provide clues on what we should be doing with respect to locking in our mortgages or choosing a fixed versus variable rate. Now, as you can see, this can be very volatile. This is a one day chart of the five year Canada bond yield, and it basically goes as low as 3.33% and all the way up as high as 3.44. So what that means is that there's a 0.1% difference in interest rates in a single day, which means that fixed rate mortgages tomorrow could be priced 0.1% higher than they are today. In fact, they probably will be. But if we go and we take a look at this chart over the long term, what you see is that it fluctuates quite a bit. And obviously, if you were to compare this to the overnight lending rate with the Bank of Canada, you would see that that chart typically doesn't move very often. And when it does, it only moves on a monthly basis, right? We've seen interest rate increases on a monthly basis going back to March. But you can see that this five year bond yield, it moves frequently and it can move quite a bit in a single day and it can move quite substantially over the course of 30, 60, 90, 180 days. And what you can see is if we go back to April of this year, it was down around 2.46%. Then it jumped up to about 3.6%, came back down to about 2.6 in August, then jumped back up to 3.43. And why this chart is so useful is because if you see this chart starting to go up, it means that five year fixed rates are probably going to go up. So in other words, we're probably going to see some increases to five year fixed rates in the short term. Now, that doesn't mean that they'll go up and stay up because as you saw back in June here, they went up and then they came back down pretty quickly into August. So while five year fixed rates move kind of in line with what's going on with the Bank of Canada, they move independently and they're often an indication of what is expected to happen in the next five years with respect to interest rates. Now, if we take a look at what's called the yield curve, this is when you take all the bond yields. So the one year, the two year, the three year, the four year, the five year, the six year, the seven year, the 10 year, the 15 year, the 20 year, and you basically chart them out. And in the video from February, we talk about an inverted yield curve and that when the yield curve is inverted, that that is quite often the best time to. OK, one second before I tell you about inverted bond yield curves and what they indicate and what you should be doing after you see one. I do want to mention real quick that if you are in the market for a mortgage in the next three to six months with five year bond yields increasing, it probably makes sense to get a rate hold put in place. This means you do an application with a mortgage broker, make sure they submit it to a lender and make sure you're protected from rising interest rates. And by the way, if you are in the market for a mortgage in the next three, six, 12 months, we have our secrets to getting the lowest interest rate course that will tell you everything you need to know about getting the best mortgage and the best rate for you. Because there are discount mortgages out there that come along with landmines and surprises, and it's important you know all about what they are. So I wanna make sure that everyone has the information that they need in order to make sure they make the best decisions for themselves and are protected from making any big mistakes. So if you want to get that course, it's priced super low. So it's affordable for pretty much anybody who is getting a mortgage. And if you end up choosing Mortgage 360 for your mortgage, it comes with a pretty significant gift. 
that will save you at least 10 times what you paid to get the course. So go to ratesecrets.ca in order to get that course and we'll see you on the other side. And that when the yield curve is inverted, that that is quite often the best time to lock into a fixed rate mortgage. So in other words, when you can borrow five-year money for cheaper than you can borrow short-term money, that's usually a good indication that that is a good time to lock in. And what I love right now is this is a really good illustration of an inverted yield curve. Because if we go back to a year ago, which is the blue line, you can see that the shorter term rates are cheaper than the longer term rates, meaning that it's probably better to choose a shorter term mortgage. Then you look at the current where the two year rate is substantially higher than the 10 year rate. And this is what we call an inverted yield curve. And what that tells us is that it might be a good time to lock in. Now, before I go any further here, I need to say something. If I tell you right now that it's a good time to lock in, there's a pretty good chance that interest rates are going to start going down sometime soon. And if I tell you that you shouldn't lock in, there's a pretty good chance that interest rates are going to go up. Because like Mosh Malewski said in his 2001 study, past performance is not a predictor of future performance. Well, in this case, there's so much going on in the economy. We've never seen anything like the economic circumstances that we're in right now. And therefore, this is really anybody's guess. But here's the point, And here's what I want to tell you about interest rates and whether you should be locking in going forward or not. If the Bank of Canada increases interest rates further and five-year fixed remain about the same, what that will mean is that you can lock in at about 4.5% on your five-year fixed mortgage and a variable rate will be costing you about 5.25%, which means you'll be able to borrow on long-term money for cheaper than you will be able to on short-term money. And at that point, I have to think that it might be a good idea to start looking at longer-term interest rates. Now, again, I could be completely wrong on this, but if you can start to borrow for cheaper than where interest rates are going, it might be a good time to lock in. Now, me personally, I might be hesitant to look at a five-year mortgage, but I might look towards the three-year and the four-year mortgage as alternatives to the five-year mortgage in order to lock in while interest rates start going up. Now, on the other side of the coin, if I know that I can weather another 1% or 2% or a 3% increase, which if you're getting a brand new mortgage is already built into the qualifying process, then I might be inclined to wait it out and see what happens with interest rates. Now, that's because I probably have a higher risk tolerance than most people when it comes to variable versus fixed rate mortgages. And we've talked a lot in the past that choosing a variable versus a fix is all about your personal risk tolerance. It's all about whether or not you would have trouble sleeping at night knowing that your interest rate could increase. And by by the way, no matter what anybody says on YouTube, no matter what your financial planner says, no matter what your mortgage broker says, if you are or were the type of person who is going to freak out about interest rates going up, you should have never been in a variable rate. And we've said that quite a lot on this channel. Again, go back and look at that February video where we talked about variable versus fixed rates, where we said specifically, if it's going to keep you up at night, do not go into a variable rate mortgage. Now, obviously, there's a lot of things happening right now. It looks as though the Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve are set to put us into a recession. Bank of Montreal suggested last week that there's a 99.9% .9 chance that we are going to find ourselves in a recession as interest rates go up. Now, I think that was a little bit over the top with respect to the likelihood of finding us in a recession. But if we do find ourselves in a recession, then at some point, interest rates are going to come back down. And again, when interest rates get low like this, there's significant interest rate sensitivity, and there is a high likelihood that we could see interest rates coming down almost as fast as we saw them going up. Now, that could not happen as well. I have to remind you that these aren't forecasts. We're purely talking about whether or not choosing a variable or a fixed is right for you. And the key thing to remember here is that as variable rates go up and they start to exceed fixed rates, that starts to put math on our side and science on our side with respect to it being a valid decision to lock in or to choose a fixed rate mortgage. And that's all we're saying here is that the math is changing. The variable rates are now on par with the fixed rates and it looks like they're about to exceed the fixed rates. And therefore, it may make sense to look at locking in at least for a three or four year term because there is that chance now that interest rates could go up exceedingly higher and if you do find yourself in a position where you decide to lock into a fixed rate, you could be protecting yourself from a lot of headaches down the road. Now, the key thing here, and I'm going to make a huge caveat, is whether or not you have a mortgage with a big bank or whether or not you have a mortgage with a non-bank. Make sure if you're locking into a three or four or a five year fixed mortgage that you're locking in with a non-bank lender, one that does not have a discount because 
if interest rates do go down in the future and you're locked in and you've got a mortgage with a place like MCAP or CMLS or First National or Merrick's Financial, you're going to have a substantially lower penalty than you would with a big bank, which will give you the opportunity to, instead of marrying the rate, date the rate and refinance into a lower rate down the road. So this is the point in time where it seems like it might be starting to make sense. Make sure you talk to your mortgage broker or your financial advisor, or if you wanna apply through us, we're more than happy to help, but it's starting to seem like it may make sense to lock in those rates if you don't have the appetite to write it out. Oh, and one last thing, just because you're here, if you want to know what we're doing, we're writing it out with our variable rate mortgages because we know over the long term, eventually we will get back into a position where we are going to end up winning on those variable rates. So if you found this video useful, and I hope you did, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video, and we'll see you on the very next one. Cheers. Welcome.